Hey guys, what's going on? It's Shuri with the GT Nuts uh, team. So today we're checking out, kind of, um, we're re revisiting a new bike. Um, this is actually my uh, RTS3. If you guys remember the video uh, that I had put, the nicest RTS3 for $150. Well, um, I thought I was going to keep it original. Apparently I did not. Uh, you know, I just wanted to experiment and try something completely different. Uh, see if it works. And uh, I'll go over the bike kind of front to back just so um kind of catch you up because this is hopefully i'll have this completed maybe within the next month we'll see so uh let's check it out so i'm um, here uh i'm running i love paul's stuff i love paul components they, they have uh anything I, I will say anything i'm list uh, talk about um i'll leave the links to a lot of this stuff below um so uh, this is a Paul um, compo box car components box car stem. It's a 31.8 millimeter clamp, our handlebar clamp diameter. It's a uh, 50 millimeter length with a one and one eighth um, stir tube um, clamp diameter here. Uh, this is their silver stem. The polished stem is like jewelry store quality. It's really nice to match the stem here by Paul's. They put the uh, bought the dropper trigger here. Uh, this is a Paul's uh, dropper trigger. It's a 22.2 millimeter clamp diameter on here, and it's nice because uh, you basically can, it's a hinge, so you don't have to do, you don't have to take apart any of this. Um, you can just bolt this on, and it's a really nice, You could. it's mechanic friendly because uh, you know, it mounts neatly out here, so you're not having to bolt underneath and then adjust, move this lever to adjust whatever, if you're not running ice spec. And uh, I like it. It's a three millimeter bolt, hex bolt, hex key. It's nice. These are some old GT grips that um, I've had. I forget which G GT I had them on when I, but uh, decided to throw these on. And once they need to get replaced, they'll uh, I'll throw on the Race Face Half Nelsons, um, my go-to favorite grip of all time. Uh, here I'm running the Chrome. You guys might remember this handlebar from. Uh, my GT Zaskar Carbon Pro from 2018. This same bar, um, and then I replaced that with a, another Chromag bar, um, the Foo, Foo bars on that bike. But um, anyway, that's what's on here because I thought, well, you know, this is a nice polished stem. And then once I get this all polished up, it'll be kind of a, a cool look. I wanted to go with the boxcar polished stem, but I was like, maybe it's a little much. I don't know. Um, so that's why I did it the way it, it's set up now. Uh, and of course, here you guys know I am a Magura brake fan, like um, through and through. So I love the MT5s. Uh, they're my go-to brake. You know the sevens are are nice too, but I think bang for the buck. You know the Magura MT5s is where it's at because you can still replace the levers if you want. If you don't like the the how long they are, um, I shouldn't have squeezed it. But think this is why I had to leave the blocks in place <laughs> because. I was going to squeeze the lever and then like, oh crap, I popped the pistons out. But um, no, I just put the, the shop left these in place. So shout out to uh, Go Huck Yourself Bikes, J. Troy Bikes and Renton. Because they, they do such a bang up job making these brakes feel really, 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 really nice. The way I like them. Um, if I try to do the bleed, it, it doesn't... I'm always like a little bit anal about it. And then that sucks. Anyway, um... Stri like I had a, I had broken another an another GT frame, and I just took the Chris King headset from it and transferred it onto this bike. Um, I do have my Sea Otter RTS, and that's completely gutted um, because I got another. I want to do something else with that bike. Um, stay tuned for that one. Uh, so here, um, I'm running the RockShox XC28 fork. I just wanted to, I wanted to do the Manitou Mark Horror, but I just wanted to see how this bike was going to turn out on the cheap a little bit. So I did go with this fork, um, and it's also because I got parts uh, for this fork, and uh, I have parts from a donor fork if it all went south. So that's why. Um, this is their 100 millimeter travel fork. It's a coil. Uh, spring fork um, you know and it's a budget fork it's about roughly you can find it maybe about I think all in all uh, tax everything like 170 175 bucks so I just wanted to try it out I think once uh, 
I decide if I like this setup, then I'll go with a different fork, a lighter one. This is a five. This is like uh, like roughly about 5.1 pounds, so it is a bulky, heavy fork. Um, here, of course, uh, Kevin Rissy came through for me, built me a uh, RockShox Genesis damper for this RTS build. Um, you know, uh, he's been. It's cool because he's he's. I I mean, it, uh, things must be going really well for him because. If you call now, um, people pick up the phone in most cases, and then people answer, uh, reply to emails after maybe the second time. So um, anyway, I'd asked, hey, I'm gonna put an order through for um, a Rissy Genesis damper on RTS-3. Uh, can you, um, are you gonna be able to, what's the lead time on it? He's like, no, just uh, put the order through, I'll get it done. And so, magic happened. Uh, and of course, because of that um i'd make sure you order uh the um rose joint through their shop it's about 20 bucks so this is about 200 and this 210 shippings included and uh because he's out of oregon there's no tax and and then here's uh this part the rose joint which is 20 bucks so really you're spending about 230 dollars um for that setup uh here i bought um some used uh, rock shot or not rock shocks. I mean, um, a sh this is originally a Shimano DR um, crank set in a 175 and it's mounted to a wolf tooth um, 30 tooth uh, chain ring here and uh, Yeah, I'm just gonna run a 1 by 10 setup. Uh, this is a really inexpensive Shimano DR 10 speed rear derailleur uh, You know, you can pick one up on eBay if you search Shimano 10 speed rear derailleur for like the newer versions out um, for the 10 speeds and you can get these for either version for under 25 bucks um, and then uh, yeah if you if I'm not good at deciding if a, it's going to run the thir a 30 42 tooth in the back a Sunrace um, 11 42 tooth cassette not exactly sure if i'm gonna need the wolf tooth or not so what happens is i try to get this bike as built as i can and if there's things that i just i'm not dialing in right then i drop it off at the shop i drop it off over at ghy uh so because then those guys do a better job so when i get on the bike i'm really really like uh, excited because it rides nice um here i've done an absolute sin this is i know the rock I know the GTRTS comes in a 26.8 C tube diameter. Uh, I reamed this out a little bit to a 27.2. There's a lot of wall thickness on here. The wall comes out to about 2.5 millimeters when you take them to digital calipers. And then you shave off just a little bit and it'll still come out to about ballpark. Um, will still come out north of um, two millimeters, which is plenty nice. Um, these are very thick seat um, seat tubes. So ream this out, put on this dropper. This is a PNW Coast dropper. It's our new one with 40 millimeters of uh, travel. And then it's, um, this is a 110 adjustment on here. So this is pretty fun you can actually put uh three two to 300 psi in it 300 max and it won't hurt hurt it according to pnw and then so i'll just route this cable i'll probably have to come up with some fancy way to route this in a tidy way and then get it hooked up here um which is my next pl uh, project i haven't figured out wheel set yet on here so um i'm kind of just sitting on the fence about it uh shout out to um Holland Colin at Cycle Fab. He's the one that welded this disc brake tab for me. Uh, I had approached him about it actually well over a year ago. I said, hey, here's the swing arm. It's steel. Could you weld a disc brake tab and could you add this brace? And, uh, or could you add a brace to it? And I showed him a picture. This is actually not an original idea. There was a guy who did this with, I think, an RTS-1. And he was in the GTRTS LTS group. And he had shared his photo. I had loved what he had done. He had cut off the brake bosses here. So my, my friend Vince, he uh, did a lot, of, he did the work, cut off this pulley, uh, the cam roller that was on here, 
and then cut off the because uh, he did some metal work and he cut off the brake bosses and they wanted as clean of a look as possible and of course kept the cable stops for obviously the rear derailleur um, and uh, sandblasted and painted it in this kind of gunmetal which I like a lot um, you know it's not shiny black and it's not whatever you know it's just I like to call it gunmetal because it, it, it yeah it looks like gunmetal if it was really in the form of a gun uh, here you know uh Man, I, I had I, I didn't realize I had plenty of these these are a rare find um, there was a guy there's a guy named David uh, I'll call him David C but who uh, needed these and I had a few spares so I floated him one pair and then I'm keeping the other for another project for my RT my uh, RTS from Sea Otter build um, I've got another plan for that uh, here wow and then yeah um, I should have said also on here uh, this well you know this work came out to um i think colin colin does this now like for a lot of his builds he'll he'll do the extra he'll do the brace i think before it wasn't listed he'd do a brace but i think ever since i suggested it i've seen it so i i don't know if he was thinking on the same wavelength but or he was like that's a good idea <laughs> but anyway um yeah, I had, to, I had to fork out over 100 bucks to get that done. Because um, obviously I don't have welding equipment at home. And I'm not really, obviously, ex, ex, as experienced as a bona fide frame builder. So I went with him. That's why. Um, it's worth the money. Uh, and, you know, I, I know a lot of people that have run, uh, welded their own kind of disc brake setup to their RTS swing arms and haven't had issues. Like, the one thing that will always go is obviously the... Uh, where the pivot would be on these chain stays it's always the chain stay that cracks about here um i've done it a couple times on other bikes without a disc brake and uh just seems to be the course of nature um anyway this is a flat post mount um ghy got the um flat mount flat to post mount on here so the mcgirl would fit on here nice and it's still a nice clean look i like it really good um i'll leave the caliper rings this color i think um <laughs> we'll see only time will tell and then of course my pro logo saddle i haven't tight tightened it up in here because i was experimenting with different saddles like an sq lab one so that's why it's a little loose like everything is just kind of prototypish right now uh but i think that yeah, maybe I'll put on some stands rims on here. I don't even know because I plan to ride this bike pretty hard now. Uh, and uh, we'll see. Um, but anyway, that is it. Uh, and we'll see how the seat post holds up. I know a lot of people on the forum will... I haven't shared it on the GT bike group forums at all because I know that there's going to be every armchair engineer telling me that like it's going to break and I need a dentist and whatever because like one time I threw a... Like, I've thrown 100 millimeter forks on these RTS bikes. I've never broken or cracked a head tube. Ever, ever, ever. Right? And you'll get everybody that's like, you need a dentist. That fork's too tall. It's 100 millimeters. It's not 160. You know, it's not a 130 fork on an RTS. It's just a 100, like, like barely 20 millimeters, right, of difference. And people will be like, well, you know, I used to have, like, a whatever size fork originally. That's whatever. It's fine. Look, I... I'm not going to rock a RockShox Mag 21 in this day and age when this fork feels way better and it performs way better. Um, it's kind of funny. Uh, I was uh, talking with this cool guy named Alex I sold a Kona to, and uh, we're, we're just talking about old bikes and stuff, and it was fun talking with him because, you know, some a lot of the old bikes, right, They in their current state, in their original museum piece state, they're pretty unrideable these days i don't know uh but so it's fun to modernize them i like to i like to do it um because i'm not i i i want to ride i love riding old bikes don't get me wrong and uh, i it's not impossible to ride old bikes in their current state but riding for me to ride bikes like this and where it kind of becomes my own work and uh you know something i'm really proud of and i'm itching i'm itching to ride this bike and tear and just r ride like hell all over the trails um in my area in my neighborhood it's 
so, I mean, you know, it's like it could hang up on a wall and you'll never write it or, you know, I, I write it to death and it breaks, but I can say I've ridden like I've, I've really shredded on this bike. And uh, that's kind of my, pr my point of pride there. But anyway, if you have any questions, um, how I did any of this build or who did what, um, I'm more than happy to, to give you the link. I'll, I'll put as many links as I can for the description. But other than that, I am excited to show you the final product um, once I decide on a wheel set. Uh, still driving me crazy. Uh, but once I do that, we will see this bike shred the trails. I'll do a shredded edit. I'm excited. Uh, so uh, thanks for watching. Um, I'm going to do a long term review on the GTLTS Sensor Elite from 2019 as well. So hang on for that because uh, that way people who are thinking about getting a bike on sale, um, well, if there are any bikes in this during this time, um, you know, can, can consider it. So anyway, love you guys. Take care. Be safe. Bye.